<laughs> no, you are watching Tom Harwood and Becca Hudson uh, for another half an hour, you lucky things. Now, it's been revealed that costs for the coronavirus tests needed to go abroad are higher in Britain than in any other country in Western Europe. Meeting testing requirements is more affordable for the residents of France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Greece and Belgium than it is for us Britons. Mm. Ian Henderson is the co-founder of Halo, one of the government's approved firms for PCR testing. Thanks for joining us, Ian. So let's start at the start. How much do your tests cost? Um, they cost uh, £89, but um, within that you get uh, courier delivery, you get a results app, um, and you get uh, an ISO-approved uh, UCAS-accredited um, gold standard RTQ-PCR test. Uh, and you only have to spit in a tube, not have a stick up your nose. Ah, I see. So is there a difference then in the price of sort of swab tests versus spit tests? Are spit tests are uh, more uh, uh, complicated to deliver? Well, it, it's not so much that. There are huge variations across the market, um, and that is absolutely true. Um, I mean, the, the recent reports say that um, quite a lot of the uh, lower priced tests uh, turn out to be uh, less than available when people apply for them, and prices go up to uh, really quite ludicrous levels. Um, we're about in the middle of the park, um, saliva or, 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 or swab. And how many of these approved firms are there? Because, of, of course, one of the things that you'd expect is that the more players in the market, the more the costs are, are pushed down. Is, is the very, really quite high cost? I mean, £89 is, is probably far more than most flights that people will be taking. Um, is, is that due to just sort of a lack of competition in the market? How many players are there here? Uh, there are literally hundreds of players, so I don't think competition is the issue. Um, what is the issue is a, a, lack, a certain lack of clarity about uh, what's actually needed and a lack of, clar lack, of, lack of education in the market as to the differences between the different tests. So spit versus swab, for example, whether you get couriers or whether you have to drive 30 miles to drop it in a post box yourself, uh, in that kind of thing, there are huge variations in the delivery and therefore in the costs. But all, all everybody, anybody sees, of course, is the headline cost. So, Ian, do you not feel like maybe that is a little steep and that things like this prohibitively expensive PCR testing is effectively creating kind of a two-tier travel culture where only the very wealthiest people who can not only afford the flights, the accommodation, the transfers, but now kind of 89 quid ahead for, you know, per, per test, you're kind of yeah. we're making travels of the preserve of the very wealthy again? Look, we're very conscious of that, and we would absolutely love to bring the costs down. And we do do that with um, family discounts. We do it in uh, with um, part in partnership with airlines and hotels, for example, where the tests are available through those providers at a lower lower cost. So that is available. Of course, um, you know the government um, is still charging VAT on these tests, so that adds twenty percent um, to to the cost. Uh, that is really quite a lot of income for, for, the, for the country. Um, and I think you mentioned that the price differential across Europe uh, is significant, and that is true. Um, but a lot of the other countries are subsidizing the tests. This is complicated science, right? This, this stuff didn't exist a year and a half ago. And what we're trying to do at Halo is to bring that complicated science to consumers in the simplest, most convenient, most painless way we possibly can at a sensible price. It does cost money. It's not, it's not cheap. It's not simple. We have built our own lab. Um, we have got it accredited by UCAS uh, to international ISO standards. That's, we're one of only uh, seven labs in the country to be ISO accredited. Uh, and that all costs money. We have invested a lot in the business and uh, we haven't seen it back yet, I can tell you that. Now, I was talking to the Transport Secretary uh, on GB News just a week or two ago, who was saying that actually the costs of the tests are coming down and you can get some now for around £40. In your experience, how common are those £40 tests versus the sort of more mid-market £89 tests? I, I yeah, I... I... It's difficult because some of those, there have been quite a lot of um, uh, press articles recently suggesting that um, the lower priced tests are uh, not always 
available you you know there, there's a long waiting times which obviously isn't convenient when people are traveling um, there are also uh, as we've seen issues with um, people having to deliver their own tests to a, to a drop box drive 30 miles to do it find it's full when they get there that kind of thing um, if you do uh, if you you know you kind of get what you pay for because as i say with halo the uh, the courier to door to door to door couriers and the app results service uh, is is included in the price. So do you, do you therefore see that there's a difference, potentially, a geographical discrimination? People who live in big cities where there might be walk-in testing centres available may be able to be uh, paying less, whereas people who live in uh, places where there aren't those sort of big testing centres that they can go to to get their flight uh, approved tests uh, are, yep. are stuck with those sort of courier options that, of course, you would expect to be more expensive. That is an issue, although um, actually um, looking at some of the prices, um, the walk-ins uh, in big cities are not always uh, cheaper than um, courier deliveries. In fact, some of them are considerably more expensive. Right, well, that's... Which does uh... seem a little strange. Yes, yes, no, of course it does. But on, on, I suppose that's a, very, that's a very depressing note to end this yeah. interview on. But thank you no, very much. I, I'll, give you, I'll give you a yeah, good no, note. One, one quick on. positive uh, note. Let's, uh... OK, Halo, Halo is a great British startup set up to try and help with this crisis last year, and we're doing our best. There you go. Right. Well, thank you very much for, <laughs> for coming on and, and, and hopefully uh, delivering some good news for people going abroad this summer. Uh, thank you for, for coming on and talking about that. Cheers. Excellent. Ian Henderson there. Well, lots